On WKYT this morning, now at 4.30, a man was rushed to UK hospital after an overnight shooting in Lexington. We'll have the latest coming right up. We're tracking the latest after a deadly crash in Mercer County. You'll hear from a man who says he watched in horror. And we're looking outside First Alert Defender Live Radar. Nothing going on now, but some storms possible later on. We'll get you into that timing coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's your Thursday, and we're glad you're with us here on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. Another round of severe storms are possible today, especially this evening and off into tonight. We have declared a WKYT first alert severe weather day to keep you safe and informed. And let's go to meteorologist Micah Harris in our first alert weather center. Micah? Yeah, we're looking outside, and there's just nothing going on. We got to wait until we hit the late afternoon. I mean, late. Off into the evening hours before we even see storms move into the far northern zone. So it's going to take some time, but we're just here to keep you updated and let you know that it is on its way. Looking at current temperatures, we're sitting there in the 60s. Believe it or not, man, that is a really good feel this time of year. When you step outside, you can really feel that feel. Roll the windows down, it's a good start to the day. 90 degrees this afternoon, that severe weather is there. But it's late. I'll go over that timetable in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. And new this morning, and on our WKYT news, a man is recovering after being shot overnight in Lexington. It happened just before midnight on Dalton Court. Police say the victim was approached by a man who asked him for a cigarette. That's when he told police that he was shot in the leg. The man has been taken to UK hospital with what are believed to be non-life-threatening injuries, and no arrests have been made in that case. And new this morning, a Lexington Street has reopened. After a Lextran bus crashed overnight. Happened just after midnight on North Limestone at 7th Street. Officers tell us an SUV and a Lextran bus collided this morning at the intersection after one of the vehicles ran a red light. Fortunately, no one was injured in the crash. There were no passengers on the bus at the time. The vehicles were moderately damaged. This morning, we're continuing to track the details of a horrific crash in Mercer County. Investigators say a driver died after a car hit a tree and then burst into flames. The crash happened on Bohan Road, not far from Harrodsburg. A man who was working nearby at the time of the crash told us what he saw. And Monique Blair has the story. It scared me. <laughs> Kevin Salee was weed eating a friend's lawn Wednesday afternoon when he says he saw something he'll never forget. A car came by and it was doing better than 50, 55 miles an hour. Captain Chester Craig with the Mercer County Fire Department says the driver lost control and hit the guardrail at the bridge. I turned around and she was headed toward the other side of the road toward the bridge and she cut the wheel and then a little white car was coming around the curve and I thought they was going head head on. Captain Craig says to avoid the oncoming car. And then all of a sudden, I heard a big boom. It appears the driver pulled to the right and hit a large tree head on. And that's when he called on far, I guess. Captain Craig says the car was completely engulfed in flames when crews got to the scene. The only occupant of the car was pronounced dead. Salee says he hopes this is a reminder for other drivers to drive with caution on this particular stretch of road. They need to slow down. Unless they won't end up like that. Monique Blair with our report there. The identity of that victim has not yet been released. The road was closed for about three hours after the accident. An Esto County pastor is recovering this morning after being shot while on a mission trip to Haiti. Bill Wesley leads Body of Christ Ministries in Irvine. He was with a group delivering supplies and reaching out to the people of Haiti. Witnesses say a vehicle filled with armed men fired at the car that Wesley was in. Wesley was shot in the leg and three Haitians were also hit by gunfire, but investigators say their injuries are not life-threatening. By phone, Wesley said he doesn't want the shooting to take away from his work. I don't want this to discourage people from not coming over and helping the people. They're, they're really good. Wesley says the bullet in his leg could not be removed while he was there. That is, until he makes it back to the United States. He is expected to be back in Kentucky at some point today. The New York State Police have arrested a second Corrections Department employee in connection with the escape of two murderers from the state's oldest maximum security prison. CBS's Daniel Nottingham has the report. 
New York State Police arrested 57 year old corrections officer Gene Palmer Wednesday evening. He's charged with promoting prison contraband, tampering with evidence, and official misconduct in connection with the escape of convicted murderers David Sweat and Richard Matt from the Clinton Correctional Facility more than two weeks ago. Prison employee Joyce Mitchell, who supervised the prison's tailoring shop, is jailed on charges she helped the men escape by smuggling hacksaw blades and other tools into the prison in frozen hamburger meat. She has pleaded not guilty. Palmer is accused of bringing the contraband to the prisoners. Earlier this week, Palmer's attorney insisted his client did not know what he was moving. He definitely did not plan to help them escape, and he had no prior knowledge that they were going to attempt an escape. Sweat and Matt escaped from the prison June 6th after using power tools to cut through their cell wall. They then busted through a brick wall, sliced through steel steam pipes, and slithered through the maze of pipes beneath the prison before emerging from a nearby manhole. Police say the killers could be armed. They say they are cunning, desperate, and considered extremely dangerous. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News. Now, Palmer was suspended from his job last week. Well, this morning, police have charged a woman with murder for the death of a Bullitt County interstate ramp. Uh, that, that is exactly where it happened there. Police have arrested 26-year-old Nicole Skyberg of California. She is now in the Bullitt County Jail. Police say she stabbed 45-year-old Aaron Gerald of Alabama last weekend near mile marker 113 of Interstate 65. Police have not said what led to the stabbing, but they are expected to release more information about the case later today. A state panel will decide what happens to the Jefferson Davis statue that is in the state capitol rotunda, and they will begin discussing the future today. Our news partners at the Herald Leader report the Historic Properties Advisory Commission will meet this afternoon in Frankfurt. The governor asked the panel to review all of the statues displayed in the Capitol. Some Kentucky politicians have called for the Jefferson Davis statue to be moved to a museum. Davis, a Kentucky native, was the president of the Confederacy. One of the candidates for Fayette County Public Schools superintendent met with the public. A forum was held at central office for Emanuel Calk. He is currently the superintendent of schools in Portland, Maine. Yesterday, he was entered interviewed by eight focus groups made up of students, school employees, and some community members. And during a news conference yesterday, Kalk was asked about what needs to be done to close achievement gaps in the school district. That has to be an emphasis in, in uh, pre-K, and not just pre-K, but high quality pre-K programs. That's been a focus in districts that I've been in, and certainly a focus in Portland, that we started to increase parents' access to high quality pre-K programs. The second candidate for superintendent, Terry Breeden, will be in Lexington today and tomorrow. Well, the NBA draft is today, and as many as seven former cats could hear their names called. For Willie Cauley Stein to make it to the NBA, he's going to have to find an offensive game. He averaged more than eight points a game while at Kentucky, but as he said, he is not getting drafted because of his offense. Well, you got to do what got you there getting drafted because I was a defensive player of the year. I'm getting drafted because I could guard multiple positions. So anything that comes other than that, there's no pressure. Like if I bring offense, then I bring offense. Like All four Wildcats have been projected as lottery picks. We'll find out today if that comes true. On KentuckyWKYT.com, you can keep track of our NBA draft coverage from New York with a live Twitter feed. Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. Our time is 439, and WKYT this morning is just getting started. Want to help your kids get some better sleep? Moms Every Day has some advice about that. That's a little bit later on this morning. And we're looking outside, seeing pretty calm conditions, but the severe chance is going to be possible later on today and off into the nighttime hours. We have a while, but I'm going to break down the timing on this and what you can expect out of it coming up.